from the Christian family to us. And as I was saying earlier, Dr. Christian's father was a civilian fire officer in the family of the So we are going to do a presentation this morning. And it's a short presentation. We also have Turkish pizza. Yes, full of original Dr. Christian family. So to start up this morning, we're going to have a short word by the fireman Christian as he give us some details. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, sir. Yeah, uh, it is a privilege to speak on behalf of the Christian family as uh, just to appreciate the hard work that has been done by the members of the fire and building service in Dominica. And um, if you know, permission to just relieve my face so you can hear me. Everybody else is wearing masks. So. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, it's just a privilege speaking on behalf of the Christian family to be a one voice of many appreciating the work that you all have been doing. I can testify to that because I'm also a member of the fire service, so just recently been assigned to the Office of Disaster Management. But for sure, I can always be called upon to assist, and I'm always willing. Okay? It is a profession, it is a vocation, what can I say? A way of life. The, <laughs> a way of life. <laughs> Once you get in there and your heart gets into it, trust me, the, the, the guys that are there before you, as you know, particularly those who have just arrived, they will tell you in their own words, you know, uh, how they, they, they grow into it and they you know, fall in love with the, the, the job. I can say that when I started, I was looking for a job. After I realized it had to be a profession, but then at the last moment, as I went along, I realized it was a vocation. It was a completely different thing. Okay? So, love it, grow into it. Okay? And in memory of Mr. Christian, who's just showing our appreciation. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Fire Officer Christian. Sure. And now we have a few words from Dr. San Christian. Thank you. Good morning to uh, Chief, Mr. DP, the data, the officers, and the ladies and gentlemen of the Dominica Fire Service. Of course, at the time that my father served, we did not have ladies, so the service is much improved uh, at this present time. I brought with me, I invited Mr. Coppel, who would represent the old guard. And, um, you know, I was a little boy when I would come to the fire brigade. And so whenever Mr. Coppel sees me, what, 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 do, what do you say to me, Mr. Coppel? You can take up the mask so you can, you can express yourself. <laughs>
on the back, but we're maintaining some degree of social distancing, <laughs> and as you've seen, everybody has a mask. I'm taking mine out just so that I can speak and articulate what I'm saying. Very briefly, I, I just want to continue on the theme of Mr. Leta as a family, and um, my experience began before I was born. My mother was Gohu there. I was in the womb when the fire um, uh, appliance was answering a false call, false alarm in Newtown, and it shall be away. Somebody saw the accident. My father was at the back of the appliance and apparently went in the air and fell on his head. And he ran and told my mother at home that the appliance shall be away and your husband fell and broke his neck. Well, fortunately, he was wearing a helmet. I was hoping to have one of those solid helmets there as an indication of what um, what you're quite familiar with, but what the public may not really realize how important that protective piece of equipment is. And that helmet actually split open. And he was admitted at the Princess Mary Hospital at the time, 
And as we speak, I see pigs are coming, and somebody can attend to them. Um, and the governor at the time came and visited him at the bedside uh, to express um, his, his concern. So I almost did not get to see my father. But as we grew up, we would bring meals to my father, my brothers and sisters, whether we were living at Portersville or Goodwill or right here in Boys Avenue where we lived for a while. I know we'd have it in a little basket covered with a nice uh, towel and um, he would quickly eat and fold the towel, wash the dishes, fold the towel, put it on the basket and we would take that home just like little red riding hood having that basket. And so to this day, wherever I eat at home or when I'm invited, you know, I always wash the dishes. Of course, if I'm a guest, they'll say, no, 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 don't do that. But it's a good thing if you do that because people think of you as a clean and disciplined person. And I always fold the towel very nicely like my father would and the washcloths and put it right there. So that is a good habit. Uh, we live in a time of the, of the virus where we have uh, children have to be homeschooled. And a lot of parents are getting, we have a Dominica Grammar School teacher here. A lot of parents have to be um, homeschooling their children. We were homeschooled at the Dominica fire service. And after school we'd come here and we'd do our homework upstairs. And he taught us as much as he could. We learned that discipline. We also learned how to play table tennis, ping pong. And the fire service had probably one of the only a few ping pong boards. So all the top ping pong table tennis people in Dominica had some association in the fire service. And that became part of my family too, so that my children in the United States were always the top ping pong people in their class and also what we call lawn tennis, regular tennis, which is a direct heritage of the Dominica Fire Service. I myself have been a guest of the Dominica Fire and Ambulance uh, service. I don't remember who attended to me. Uh, any one of you when you picked me up at Point Michelle, I remember the face. And all I can say is, is thank you so much because I experienced that professionalism and concern. I don't remember much of the trip, but I could see through the windows the, the, tall, the trees and the tall buildings, and I would ask him, are we in Lale Coco now because I'm not seeing any buildings? and uh, so forth and so forth. So uh, I thank God for the, the swift and the professional care that was rendered to me as an individual. And many of us during our lifetime will have the opportunity. So I just want to say in closing, and I, I welcome uh, Trudy Christian here who is the first granddaughter of Mr. Christian and she will be saying a few words and presenting the plaque to the chief, that this is a tribute to every single one of you. As uh, fire officers, you get to see some of the most difficult and ugliest things that even the nurses and doctors don't see because you have scooped up and, and packaged this victim before they come to the hospital. I remember one time there was a major accident. I don't know whether you were there when the accident was in the tower, where you were uh, uh, on, in the service at that time. So uh, you have had to steal your, your gut to deal with those unpleasant things. You've had to learn to control your emotions and to save lives. And in this epidemic that we are dealing with, you are indeed the very tip of the spear of the frontline workers because you get to the people I was speaking to the chief just before the meeting, the number of calls that you've made to go out to get people from the port and quarantine and everything like that. So we thank God for you, we thank God for your service, and we wish you strength and protection. And I, you showed me the magazines uh, that you've done, and I'm so very impressed. Fire, fired up, fired up. So we, we have to get fired up, and we'd like to get our, all of our young people in high school, in primary school, to be familiar with the work of the Dominated Fire and Ambulance Service so that they can develop that character and that commitment to taking care of other people and learning that kind of discipline. So I'm going to introduce now, if you will, uh, Trudy. Trudy, uh, this is the plaque. And um, 
Trudy is a famous moderator and debate coach uh, for the Dominica State College, and she will say a little bit about who she is. First, uh, granddaughter of Mr. Christian. Second, second. Uh, okay, so you have the floor. If you take off the mask for a second, I will put mine back on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I was happy for the mask so you wouldn't see my expression. Sorry for, <laughs> sorry for being late. I am sure my uncle has said everything there is to say. I just want to include my voice to what I'm sure he has said in terms of gratitude to the fire ambulance service for being frontline workers, especially in this time. And of course, in memory of my late grandfather, who himself was a fire officer. Although in my lifetime I didn't observe him as a fire officer by that time he had retired. Um, but I do recollect all the stories that he had about his time as a fire officer. So in his memory um, and in gratitude for all the exemplary service that is provided by you all. As a teacher myself, I get to now stay home and be in quarantine and you have to be out still working. So it is very, very important that we show this gratitude and I am very pleased to present this plaque to you on behalf of the Christian family and of course in memory of Wendell Christian, my grandfather. Can you read it please? Okay. So it reads in memory of Wendell Mackenzie Christian, LSM, who was a station officer from 1954 to 1981, whose unswerving sense of duty to the Dominica Fire Service Discipline and teamwork helped consolidate respect for that institution in the public mind. His legacy is a tribute to the brave men and women of the Dominica Fire and Ambulance Service who now render meritorious service with ongoing disaster and emergency response, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. From the grateful Christian family of Dominica. <laughs> 